Okay, welcome back. This is Particles for Dummies. You're not the dummy. I'm the dummy. First thing, top left corner, change this drop down to effects. Remember, all that's doing is just changing the top row of options. So effects just opens up more opportunities for you. I'm going to go to end particles all the way down to create emitter. As soon as you do that in your outliner, three things are going to pop up. One, the emitter, two, particle system, and three, the nucleus. When you're working with particles, if things aren't working, you can go ahead and turn this off. This is our cache playback. I'm just going to turn that off and then I just won't have a cache playback. So it's just going to re-simulate. Like I can't scrub through my timeline, which is fine for this example. So my particle system is working. The first thing we're going to look at is probably just the nucleus, just so we can get that out of the way. We have these particles that are being emitted from our emitter. Particles are being emitted. And then the nucleus is kind of like the world settings for this system. So under nucleus, we're in our attribute editor. This is where we can play with gravity. So if I were to turn this off or down to zero, Go back to frame one. You'll see these particles are just being emitted. Gravity is not affecting them. I can change wind direction, wind speed. Typically, the only thing I ever use the nucleus for is tweaking the gravity, things like that. I'm going to put that back at 9.8. Back to frame one. That's a good habit. We're back to normal. Nucleus is out of the way. Let's go to the emitter settings. Once again, in my attribute editor, this top portion doesn't really matter a whole heck of a lot. We have emitter type. So let's do directional. Back to frame one. Press play. You can see it's just casting out at a direction. So we have spread. Now it's giving us different results, still heading in this direction. What this also means is if I rotate this, go back to frame one, I have rotated my system so I can change the angle of this if I want to. No matter what emitter type, rate, particles per second is important. So if I have one particle per second, it's going to do exactly what you would think. It's going to spit out one little white dot every second. Pretty neat. And let's go more on the extreme end, a thousand particles per second. Right, I have a greater volume of particles that are emitting. Omni, it's just all directions. Surface curve volume can be nice. So if I have a volume, it's just going to emit within this volume. The nice thing about this is you can just kind of visually see. So if I were to scale this whole thing this direction, like this, you know, I know where these particles are going to fall. So lots of different ways you can emit your particles. The most important section of this is under end particles. These are the particles themselves. And we're going to start from the top, go down. Most of the stuff we won't get into. This is not a deep dive. So count, you won't even worry about this. This is just, you know, how many are active currently. Lifespan. It's not really a wise idea to have lifespan live forever. These particles are going to be emitting my CPU when I'm playing these particle systems that won't die. So we're just going to, we're at 22 immediately. So you can obviously see the slope. This is just going up and up and up and up. We can go to our count and see how many particles there are. So it's just a bad idea, especially if you have more complex particles to let them live forever. That's just not a good thing. So we can say, hey, let's do a constant range. It's set to one currently. These are going to go and then they're just going to die, which should give you different results if I were to just play this. You can see our CPU usage is far more stable. It's, it didn't have like an upward trend like we did over here. So just keep that in mind when you have particle systems. So we can change this value. Maybe I would like it to them all to die and only have a lifespan of 10. So they're going to go live their life and then whatever value of 10, eventually they're going to die. So 10 is way down there in this case. Let's just set that to two and then we'll be good. So I'm going to put this back to normal, this emitter. So we're going to go to the emitter. We're going to go to Omni. Uh, we're going to just going to move this thing up a little bit back to our particles. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my course, Noob to Ninja and Maya, where I'll get you up to speed with modeling, lighting, materials, and rendering. Check it out in the description below. We have collide on, we have self collide. So if I were to turn that on, go back to frame one, press play. It's kind of hard to visualize, but these particles, when they get close to each other, they are going to be pushing each other apart. So we're going to skip some of this and come back to self collide here in a moment. So let's go all the way down to shading. Right now we're shading, we have points. That's what we can see here. Okay. So back to particle systems in our attribute editor, instead of points, there's lots of things you can do. Some things won't really render at all with uh, Arnold. Some will. I like spheres because it just helps us visualize what in the world's going on here. Back to self collide. Self collide is off. We're going to press play. And you'll notice like our column is like much thin. These spheres are penetrating each other. As soon as I turn on self collide, go back to frame one, press play. They're spread out because they're pushing each other. They're self colliding. So we have lots of things that we can do. One of those is just like bounce, friction, stickiness. So if I were to change this value to one, 
when they collide with each other, they're going to be a little bit more bouncy. So that's why it's a little more spread out. Let's do the extreme. Let's do like 50. And that is so crazy that it didn't even work. Okay, let's try five. There we go. So five is incredible. They're hitting each other and just bouncing like crazy. Let's turn that off. Back to frame one. This is our default with self collide on. Let's change stickiness. Let's do a value of two. So they are kind of like clumping together a little bit differently. You can see the shape of this. Okay, our particles are working. We have particle size. Let's go back to frame one, press play. This is literally gonna do what you think it's gonna do. So point one, half the size, and these are all. So point two is fine in this instance. Um, we're not gonna play with collision ramps, dynamic properties. This one's important. The most important thing here would just be mass. So later when we talk about different forces on these objects, if I have a mass of like 100, you can't really tell. I mean, like all objects fall to earth at the same rate of speed, right? Not counting in uh, uh, wind resistance and things like that. But now this low mass, it's just kind of like kind of floating basically. So you can play around with the mass, but like I said, it has more effect whenever you're adding different forces upon them. Put that back to one. We will talk about rotation at a later, later date. We are going to add a plane. I'm going to scale this up and let's go ahead and scooch our emitter up a little bit more. Now with this plane selected by default, nothing is going to happen, right? It's going to go through our plane. So we need to select our plane. I like to go to end cloth and then create passive collider. Now, when I do this, this gives me lots of different properties that I can have for this plane, but we're just keeping them in default for now. Now you can see, hey, here we go. It's hitting the plane. It's colliding. In my particle system, we have self collide on. So let's turn that off just so you can see the difference. While it's not going through the ground, right? They're not self colliding. It just doesn't look very good in my opinion. It doesn't look very realistic. There we go. Actually, let's go to the emitter. It seems like I'm emitting a lot. I'm just going to go back to 100. There we go. Self collide is having these push each other, which looks pretty neat. And then they live and die. I just want to see them start to fall off. So back to particles, two, six. And they're falling. Great. Pretty cool. So now that we have this plane, let's go back to our particles. And before I told you about stickiness. So now this will be more interesting since they're going to kind of pile up here. So let's do stickiness of two. They're kind of clumping together already. And then you can see we get wildly different results. They're stacking on top of each other. Um, and then this would be a cool way if I wanted to like fill something or have like snow falling and then pile up on top of each other. This could be a way to do that. So let's change that to four. There, you can see it's just piling on top of each other. We have max self collide iteration. So if you need more kind of realism, more collisions, you could increase that number at a cost, obviously. Let's take this. We can then um, do some things with this. We could rotate this just to change our whole simulation. So now these are going to fall down this direction. So let's take our particles and actually add different forces to it. So we know we have gravity through our nucleus already working. But with the particle selected, I can then go to fields and solvers and let's do turbulence. So turbulence, you know, has lots of settings. I like to go to volume control attributes and change this to, let's do just a sphere. That way I have a size that I can just see here. Um, and then when the particles get into this sphere, they are kind of going to be like randomized. There's going to be this turbulence that's going to happen. So I'm going to set a value of 50 frame one play. Let's do 500 just so we can see things happening. There we go. So I'm going to pull this. So nothing happens. And then when it enters the sphere, there's this turbulence that happens. So it's kind of this randomization, like this, uh, not a vortex, but just this swirls and swirls of different winds happening. And all of that is controlled by the turbulence through magnitude. I have frequency. And if I put this whole thing within this, They'll just be affected like this. So you can get some randomization in your particles. Obviously, this is the extreme. Let's change that guy. Let's grab the particles, fields and solvers. Let's do vortex. Once again, I have volume control. You don't have to do this, but I just I just like to kind of visualize where this vortex is. Uh, and then that vortex magnitude, let's do 500. And now you can see this is a twisting vortex. Get rid of that. Particles, fields, and solvers. Uh, radial. 
this would be kind of just like a, almost like an explosion. If you envision a sphere here, uh, the radial is just imagine the sphere that has a collider that's just scaling up. That is kind of what the radial is doing in particle fields and solvers radial. If I move it over here, it's going to push from left to right. Let's add air. So in particles, fields and solvers, air. We've got our direction, our speed. Let's change our magnitude to 500. Our direction, we'll do on the x-axis. Let's do 500. And here's our x-axis. It's blowing wind that direction. If I change this to volume controls, back to frame one, you'll notice that it, it's kind of disregarding all of these settings. So I would need to come in here. It's only disregarding until it enters this volume, which can be super helpful because then you know, yes, there's this breeze that's blowing in this section, kind of like in real life. Let's go ahead. We've got our particle system. We have a passive collider. Things are great. Particles are self colliding. Pretty cool. But what if I want to emit an object? This can be any object that you want emitted from this particle system. The very first thing that I would do is we need to grab our object, hold control, grab our particle system in particles, I'm going to hit the option box and we're just going to reset this. Make sure everything's good. So in particles instancer immediately, you can see that these particles are no longer spheres, but they are this object. Now, if I were to take this original object, go back to frame one, you'll see that like those changes have been updated. This, these are all instances of this one. So once again, let's grab and make a big change. You can just see that I can change that if I need to. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's go to our particle system. Let's go to our attribute editor. Let's go to collisions. And while this is colliding, I don't necessarily love how much uh, like penetration there is within these cubes. So I could say collide with, so if I were to change each of these to two, we're gonna get different results and you can see we have the width scale self collide width scale so like this one probably could stay at one but the self collide this looks a little bit better those cubes are colliding a little bit differently too large of a number and you'll see okay they're definitely not touching at all anymore so let's change this to four now you can see these cubes aren't touching each other anymore so you can play around with this value so one of the things like while this is cool what if i wanted these cubes to like rotate. Here is the system to do that. I'm going to get rid of this instancer. The very first thing that I need to do is grab the particles, go down to rotation, click compute rotation. We're going to keep everything at default right now. Nothing's really going to change currently. You can't even tell even if they were, which they aren't rotating, but you have to turn that on. Let's go ahead, grab our cube, grab our particle system by holding control in particles. This time hit the option box for instancer, but we're going to scroll down allow all data types under rotation options under rotation find rotation key piece this is per particle i believe and then when we hit create we made the instancer but we have rotation with these cubes now by default it's just kind of going to be wild and crazy and that is where this number comes down so i'm going to change this to point one and at least in this example that's still pretty crazy so let's dampen that maybe so you can see we're definitely getting interesting results definitely feels like a little slow that rotation but we have that rotation looks far more natural and things are great so don't be afraid you don't have to just use cubes you can emit whatever you want obviously more geometry you might run into more issues but lots of fun things that you can do with this